it was a long, long but beautiful day here in uh, Campbellville. I'm gonna cut my face off shaving last night. I haven't done that for a while. Uh, I guess that's what happens when you don't pay attention. <laughs> so, um, got to the barn today. Man, oh man, it's plus seven, but it feels like it's like just a beautiful fall day here. And uh, the last grouping of the Harrisburg horses didn't land until uh, until this morning. So we didn't get, uh, there's four, you guys don't know but two of them, there's four of them that landed here this morning, we'll get into all them, also um, the ones that we broke, uh, the ones that we broke, so we got the drone coming, drone's coming Saturday, give you guys a chance to look at all of them, you might say, geez, how many is there, I don't, I don't know exactly, uh, I didn't take an exact head count, there's somewhere between 72 and 76 yearlings in the barn right now, which is incredible. A little odd, but a little little uh, weird, surreal somewhat, but uh, incredible nonetheless. For those of you doing the quick math, how many overall, total, all over the world that the stable.ca has uh, a vested interest in, that would be somewhere north of 140 horses. So that's quite, uh, quite the accomplishment over the last 36 plus months that we've been in business. Um, you know, to say that, that the stable, and I said this before, to say that the stable has exceeded my expectations would be shocking, would be, would be an understatement, but, um, absolutely ex exceeded anything I thought was, was, uh, accomplishable, um, in, in said time frame. Um, it's, it's been incredible. Um, you know, I looked at how we did in the sales last night. I was looking, I was doing the numbers quick, you know, making sure we got to pay for all these horses, um, Harrisburg and then the Lexington check. All you guys think that we just go to the sale and write a check and bang, they're all paid for. That would be great, but we do not. Um, we got about 30 days to put all the money together for uh, a couple of the bigger sales. I gave a check in for Lexington at Harrisburg. That was 250000 I believe, quarter million dollars American. Then we had paid almost 200000 in Ohio, the big Ohio Select sale, 150 in London. I have to send that check down today. And then we had another, um, we spent another 180 I think, in Harrisburg. It sounds like a lot, because it is, but it's less than we spent last year. So we spent less than we did last year and got a higher quantity. I want to say more, but time will tell if we got more. I believe what we got were some very, very nice horses. Um... Very nice horses, and, and I would attribute the lower prices quite simply to um, quite simply to the fact that a lot of the bigger stallions were taking up everything, which I, I assumed would say it would happen. I had said that before we went to the sales that we were going to look for other ways in, as I called it, other ways into jurisdictions, into Pennsylvania without buying Muscle Hills and Captain Treacherous and Sweet Lou's uh, Art Speak. Donato Hanover, Andover Hall, Sebastian K. Those were our portals, if you will, our vehicles into those jurisdictions. Now, did it work? We won't know until next July or August. I don't think anybody's out there thinking that we bought a $20,000 Sebastian K that is supposed to somehow uh, topple the, the market in Pennsylvania. But we bought a $20,000 Sebastian K, and if he goes out and races good and you know has some fun, we have some fun along the way, then that's what the stable.ca is for. We're not out there buying horses that are cheap, but we are looking to pay less money than other people would for theirs. So, for instance, if you look at uh, the, the Harrisburg sale is a perfect example. I told you that the first two horses I was really interested in, well, the first horse was obviously the first horse in the ring. Number one, uh, I forget his name, but uh, I can tell you his name easily enough. But he uh, he was a horse that I was hoping we could get for around 80. We had put together enough people that I thought 80 was doable. He was a good-looking horse. And I could make a case for, for that horse just off his looks, his pedigree, and uh, and the jurisdiction. Uh, we didn't get him. He went for six figures, 115 or 105. Two of them I liked. One went for 115, one went for 105. We were in at 80, 85, somewhere around there on both of them. And we didn't get either of them. But... Somebody has to go out there and stake that horse, pay bills on him, and then race him. So when you think about it, it's very difficult when you think of all the money that was spent on Muscle Hill, Cantab Hall, uh, Father Patrick, 
and then on some of the Sebastian K's, um, there's a lot of money on the table, and I'm just not sure there's enough revenue out there to uh, to justify it. But I can be wrong. I mean, that just it's not like I have an algorithm here that says no, it's just not possible. Of course, it's possible, but um, you know, I think what those people, a lot of those people are doing is is looking for the best one in Pennsylvania, and we're looking for one that's worth more than what we paid for it. So unfortunately, we weren't able to buy any Muscle Hills or Captain Treacherous's, or uh, we did buy a Cantab though. Um, or, um, uh, Sweet Lou, things of that nature. They just went too high as they should. They warranted they're good horses. But as I said, from the outset, we were looking for other ways to get into Pennsylvania. And if it doesn't, if it doesn't work out, so be it. Uh, we're not going to lose our shirts of this. I can guarantee you somebody will somebody there's going to be a lot of tears shed in Pennsylvania this year for some of the horses that were bought, but that's horse racing, right? My job is is somebody looking after uh, your money. I know that we're out there trying to have fun and we're not looking to spend a ton of money to do it, but we would like to be somewhat competitive. And for those out there that say, you just can't do it, well, I think Simba was pretty good this year. Stonebird Simba, White Tiger, uh, set a world record. We paid 22000 for him. Um, yes, in Ohio, uh, West 52nd ended up making 50, 57, 50 some thousand. Um, the uh, Oso Pine was a pretty good horse. Swandre the Giant, I keep coming back to him. I don't want to keep dwelling on him, but he did make a quarter of a million. Take us, take away the the million dollar sale. He did make over two hundred thousand, I believe, and uh, well over two hundred thousand. And he was a seventeen thousand dollar purchase. Both uh, uh, not an angel and um, Ivanka did well in uh, in Illinois. I mean, we're gonna have these horses for a while. It's not like you have to get back in the black or or turn a profit in year one as a two year old. But it would be nice to have uh, have our horses racing as well as they can. And I could go on and on, see you in Tuscany, Twinsburg, um, uh, well, Lawmaker, Cruising in Style. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, you, you get the point. You don't have to spend a million dollars to have a million dollar horse. And we're not in any interest. I'd have no interest in spending a million dollars on any horse. And spending six figures on a horse, if we have... Uh, if I really like the horse and, and I think he's a, a real good looking individual and you're just going to have to be forced to pay that looking at his pedigree, then fine. I guess we can justify that sometimes, but we couldn't this year, nor did we have to. We spent a little under a million dollars this year on buying our yearlings. Last year, it was just a tick under $1.2 million. So we spent quite a bit less and I hope we got quite a bit more, but time will tell. So um, when we look through the horses we got in Harrisburg, Path of Totality, this is a sister to uh, this is a sister to Burn Doll, who made just under nine hundred thousand dollars. Very, very good horse. This is a good looking filly. I jogged around the track today, and just looking for my sales catalog, and I found it. So Burn Doll uh, was a very, very nice horse. This is a sister to Burn Doll. This is Path of Totality. Burn Doll took a mark of 152 and one as a three year old trotting filly and made just a tick under $900,000. You have Dig That Girl who made, took a mark of 154 as a three year old and a four year old and she made uh, $275,000. Then you drop down into the third dam and of course you have Harmonious who was a winner of the Hambletonian at three, three-year-old trotter of the year, 1990, a million dollars, a mark of 53 as a three-year-old. So Burndall, uh, she does stand off a little bit, but lots of trotters do. And for $10,000, she doesn't stand off that much. I watched her on the track today. Same thing as uh, Miss Mischief Maker. Both Donato Hanovers, both stand kind of at 10 and two. Both look like they're gonna trot up over their knees, which is not shocking. Many trotters do that. So Path of Totality, I just looked, there's just a little bit under half of her remaining for sale. Sebastian Yu, another horse on the track. It's funny, we have four Sebastian Ks, two are flawless trotters, and two need a little weight and are a little, a little trappy gated and a little pacey, but lots of trotters are. Uh, White Tiger was last year when we started him, so I'm certainly not concerned with that. Uh, I saw Sebastian Yu on the track today. Danny likes him, says he just needs a little bit of weight up front which many trotters do, so he'll get that weight and continue on. We have about 90% of him left. Now, Rooney Blue Chip. This is one big, big boy on the track. I got a video of Rooney Blue Chip and of, uh, oh, my girl, Beach Bum BB today. Um, Rooney Blue Chip, uh, I'm going to put that 
that video on Facebook today. He's a good looking colt. This is a big, by far our biggest colt we've bought this year and maybe the biggest colt. Uh, you, you know, people say, oh, Time Al Kazam, he's a big horse. This is a bigger horse. And um, I think probably the biggest horse I can remember in recent history that we broke. I'm sure there's one or two, but um, definitely the biggest one in my recent memory that we have Rooney Blue Chip. This is a colt by Trixton out of a sister to Crazed. So a uh, very good family there, top to bottom. $27,000 we paid for Rooney Blue Chip. And um, Sebastian Yu, obviously, is a Sebastian K. Now, the trick is Sebastian Yu was my third pick overall just on the way he looked. But his pedigree is not as strong as the other horses. We ended up getting him for $12,000. So I think his pedigree kind of dictated what his price was, which is fine. Um, I bought a horse that I thought was a, a, an incredibly good-looking individual, and I'll stand beside that, and we'll see how Sebastian looks in the coming weeks. Again, you'll get a quick look at him. They've been in the harness a week, but you'll get a look at them in the drone. In between those two was Beach Boutique. This is a full sister or two, Dancing on My Own, that we bought last year. One, And I don't want to say it out loud and say, oh, she's a better-looking filly, because that would sound ridiculous. She is a big filly. Uh, she's filled out a little bit more than, than Dancing on My Own was at this time last year. So we'll see how Beach Boutique behaves our other some beach somewhere is out of a mare i know very well the mare's name was it's no secret and it's no secret did me nothing but good as a driver imagine how good she was i won three golds with her so um it's no secret second foal is i'll play it alone and there's over half of him sold right now danny likes him a lot first step on the track all he's done is pace since he's been here i haven't gone with him yet danny's gone with him two times and he said all he'll do is pace on the track. So that's great. That's I'll Play It Alone. Little under half of him still available. Next is Libero Hanover. First horse we're going to geld. Man, oh man, can he kick. Wow. Libero Hanover is a, a good bred. Uh, I want to tell you who he's by. Well, he's by Cantab Hall. I know that. 293 was Libero Hanover. Libero Hanover, I thought, would probably bring 20 or 30 on his video, on his pedigree. Good looking colt. This is a... Um, this is a fourth foal out of an Andover Hall mare. Yeah, the second dam is Scully FBI, who is the dam of Federal Flex. Third dam is the dam of San Remo Cosmos. Now, the first day he was lights out. He kicked everything. Today I went with him again. He was better today, much more behaved and intelligent. Um, sometimes you get them like that. You know, they just don't want to do their work and they want to wreck everything. Not like Curious Winner was last year. He was a bad little bugger. This guy was good today and didn't kick at all. But the first day, man, oh man, oh man, he kicked there. There's about 10% left on this guy. He should sell out pretty quick. He's got a pretty fluid, beautiful gait, well-bred colt at $11,000. Pretty hard to go wrong from my point of view um, with Libero Hanover. Horse that just sold out today. Johan is a horse we put the harness on him. I was, so for those of you out there that know about breaking horses, sometimes it can take a long time. Back when I was a kid helping guys in the Maritimes, it's a three-week process. Harness them, hand walk them, you know, line drive them, maybe get them in the cart inside of two weeks, but very rare. Uh, this guy here, I walked in a stall, put the harness on him. Usually I buck and kick because it's around their, their belly, right? Um, walked in, put the harness on him. He just looked at the harness, went over and ate a hay cube. I picked him head up, put him on the cross ties, put a bridle on him, tied his tongue, put the jog cart on him, went out and jogged him a mile and a half, and he looked great. If you're on my Facebook page, go on there and look at the video from Johan. Anyway, somebody obviously saw him. They bought all the shares in him. Johan is all gone, except for one share. Johan is all gone. He sold out. The next one is Forged in Fire. He just landed here this morning. Forged in fire. This is a Yankee Glide. Uh, this is one of our better bred horses. But uh, as usual, there's a little catch. This guy is uh, the 14th foal. A lot of people say, no, 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 14th foal. Well, the horse that won the Little Brown Jug was the 15th foal. And the horse that was second or third in the Little Brown Jug was the 13th foal. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say, you know, it's how the individuals look. How they look. Here comes Kirby. That's not a Sasquatch. That's Kirby. Um, it's how they uh, how they look. So number 574, Forged in Fire, this is a sister to Emmy Lou Who. And Emmy Lou Who, she's, not only was she a good mare and made 635000 in her own right, took a two-year-old mark of 157, three-year-old mark of 154, she went on to throw Emoticon Hanover. Now this is 
a sister to the mother of Emoticon Hanover. Emoticon Hanover won the Breeders' Crown. She's got, what, $1.6 million made now. Just a tremendous mare. Uh, just a tremendous filly. As a trotter, a four-year-old. A four-year-old on a 5 8 mile track, 150 and 2. Just a lot of speed, a lot of power. Then you go back to the second dam. Long time ago, as you can imagine. Eager Sealsters in there. Horse of the Year, 1994. Hello, uh, Ethan Sealster. This is just a great family, top to bottom. But he is the 14th full. Certainly didn't bother me. Go look at his yearling video. Go look at my video. I shot of him two days before the sale, uh, before his sale. Um, his yearling video, and then take a look at his pedigree. Won't be any issue selling this guy out. He just got here today. There's still 90 shares, so there's lots of time, I guess. Well, I guess there wasn't. The Ohan, it didn't take much long. It didn't take very long for him, but uh, Forged and Fire, lots of shares left. Really, really good-looking page on this guy, and uh, we bought him for $23,000. As you can imagine, there's a lot going on. You're trying to gauge, can I buy the one later on, or will he go for too much? Should I buy this one? You all, everybody knows I was there to buy number 560, and uh, Charlie Norris got that horse. Um, a good-looking Donato Hanover Colt. Ultimately, what it came down to was... I couldn't have got him for the thirty he went for. It would have taken me a lot more, probably thirty six to forty thousand dollars for a Donato Hanover Colt. We've got like four or five Donato Hanover Phillies. I said to myself, we have the horse that I wanted coming up later on very badly, who I knew would go for a little bit less. And then Forged and Fire was going up. Two other horse. We had like four or five Pennsylvania breads that day to get uh to get five sixty. What was his name? To get five sixty market district i would have had to go 36 or 40 thousand dollars which may have shut the rest of the sale down for us spending forty thousand dollars on that donato hanover colt would have certainly ensured that i would not be buying forged and fire and i might not have ended up with the boy that i liked almost the most of anybody willpower fashion i might not have ended up with him also so i opted to let 560 slide through the ring when forged and fire came in and the bidding stopped with us at twenty three thousand dollars i thought Apples for apples, I think we made a great deal here. I don't want to say we made a better deal because the other horse might be world champion. They both might not be any good. I have no idea. But uh, as it turns out, uh, we ended up with Forged and Fire, and I think we were very, very fortunate to do that. So 574, the son of Yankee Glide, the sister to Emmy Lou, who I guess the uncle of Emoticon Hanover is ours, and we'll be breaking him tomorrow. You'll see him Saturday under the drone. That's Forged and Fire. Next was something I didn't want. Probably the least important thing to me in the entire universe was buying a pacer that was from New York. But uh, we do have a lot of clients in New York, and a lot of them are asking us, hey, what about, you know, can you look at this colt? And we had one specific client said, Anthony, can you come look at this horse? He's right over there. So I walked over, and they pulled him out on the floor. He was a dandy. He looked good. Uh, he's an American ideal. There's lots of speed and money all through the all through the all through all three uh, generations of this horse's pedigree. Um, some really really nice horses, but uh, he was a pacer and he was from New York. So our client said, uh, he said, "Hey Anthony, there's Jason. Look, the afternoon shift." Um, he said, <laughs> "He's just finishing up." Um, he said, uh, "What do you think?" I said, um, he's going to bring forty or 50000 Kenny. He said, well, I'd take a chunk of him at forty. I said, okay. So I'm still thinking to myself, if you look on the sale board, uh, those extra shares that are available in all these New York breads. Like you look at a horse like Brushcut. Brushcut is out of a sister to lather up. He's got a brother made like a quarter of a million dollars. You couldn't ask for a better bred horse. I thought he was worth forty. We bought him for seventeen, and I still own 70% of them. So I'm not too enthusiastic you know when somebody says i'll take a chunk of a horse that's great but i own the rest of the chunk until they're sold so i was a little concerned still but i said at 40 he was probably worth it when we got him at 19 he was really worth it so i was very happy to get arctic force just one of those things where um what i would consider at least right now we were at the right place at the right time maybe if he doesn't race next year we were at the wrong place at the wrong time but for right now I believe we were at the right place at the right time. I believe he's pretty much sold out uh, Arctic Force and really should be the way he looks. He's a gorgeous horse. Then came two of my top picks, which is very rare. They were both late and late in the sale. Um, one I knew we could get. I thought probably both of them we could get. One was a um, Uncle Peter filly. 
And uh, but it was weird because all these horses, everything we bought was scripted. We did the videos of every horse we purchased. We did a video before the sale of the horses, which I don't think has ever happened for us. Not even, not even close where you would say, I like this one, this one, this one. And then you get them. Very rare. Now, granted, I wasn't picking Muscle Hills. And as I said, I was deviating. I was going around those horses. I didn't pick those horses on purpose because I knew we couldn't afford them. And I wasn't there. I was looking for value. And I think we did a great job with that. All, uh, all sale season long was finding value. I'm leaking. Finding value uh, in the horses that we bought. I thought we did. So we had uh, Pine Creek. Pine Creek's an Uncle Peter Philly. The second full, uh, full sister last year. Looked like she was on front and cruise control and her qualifier made a break on the front end and they stopped with her. Maybe she got injured. I'm not sure. Uh, that was Aunt Susanna. And this is Aunt Susanna's full sister by Uncle Peter. The second dam is the dam of the international trot winner this year. The Yon Yonkers trot. Yon no, it might be two different things. The international trot, I believe. Cruzado Del Noche. I know somebody's going to say he's going to correct me. But um, that horse is in the second dam. So this was a gigantic, big, good-looking Uncle Peter filly. And you know how I feel about Uncle Peter's. I think they're nice horses. And Pine Creek, the way the sale shook down, Pine Creek was an outlier. I didn't think I could afford her. We already had 17 Ohio bred yearlings. Wasn't on the top of our list. Didn't really need to make it into our, uh, into our shopping cart, so to speak. But at $16,000... Um, it was pretty hard for me not to, and she's completely sold out and I knew she would be, she was sold out immediately. So Pine Creek, um, Ohio, we love Ohio. Ohio has been great to us. And, um, I think Pine Creek is a good looking filly. Uh, very, very, very tall, long legs, great looking filly on the track too. So Pine Creek all sold out. And so is the next guy. I, I stopped short of telling everybody this was my number one pick overall because he was a possess the will. There hasn't been very many good possess the wills. They've only had three, uh, three years in them. Not to mention he's being sold by a farm that races horses in fashion firms. What do they know that we don't? I mean, there's a lot of questions swirling around this horse. You know, he's by an obscure off the beaten path sire from Pennsylvania. Who was a good horse in his own right, but not as a sire yet. Not to say he's not. He's only had two or three crops, but as of yet, no. So you have... A horse being sold by a firm that races horses. By a sire that is not what you would call desired in Pennsylvania. Um, his sister's Fashion Athena took a mark of 153 as a two-year-old. And then the second day, you know, the, the entire family is a good family. But you get the possess the will and the, and the fashion firm's angle. I love this cult. From day one, I told everybody this was, you know, quietly. If you were there at the sale with me, I told you this was my number one pick of the entire sale. Third last horse they were selling. But I was curious and I was concerned with the, you know, possess the will and, and the fashion firm's angle. And then we bought the Ohio Philly and I'm like, I had almost given up on him. And I didn't, I, I loved the horse, but we got, we had four Pennsylvania trotters now. I needed three. We got four. So I remember uh, 737 was Pine Creek, 872 was Will Power Fashion. We went to supper because I knew we had like an hour and a half. It was eight minutes away. So I'm watching, I'm watching the sale on my phone live. And I said to Amy, I said, we're going to go watch this call. I said, if this call goes through the ring for nothing, I won't forgive myself. He ends up being a good horse. Um, I'll, I'll be very upset over that because I knew he probably wouldn't bring that much money. I almost had him at 6000 We ended up getting him for nine. I bought arguably, if not the, then one of my top picks. Definitely the top pick of the ones we bought just because I liked them. Um, you know, the possess the will aside, the fashion firms aside, is an individual. I love this colt. And we got him for 9000 If I had to watch this horse sell for 7000 on my phone, I might have thrown it through the window of the restaurant, in which case I would have been incarcerated. And asked politely not to come back. So it's good that I went back to the sale. <laughs> so we ended up with Will Power Fashion. Now, we also had one of our clients, a very good friend of mine, David Shea, purchased Film Fanatic for 38000 This is a Better's Delight Colt out of a sister to... I can't believe I just forgot that. Out of a sister to Burke's Good Horse. All bets off. 
out of his sister to all bets off. Um, there's no shares available. David bought this horse himself. Then uh, one of our other clients, Gerald Newbigging, bought a uh, also bought a better or no, his was a Mach three, six ninety. His was a Mach three. Weird name. Uh, oh, I thought I missed him. A weird a weird named horse. Uh, his name's Marzan Canover. He's got decent breeding up and down. His his mother is a sister to a horse that won uh, the, at Yonkers the other night. Mock it so. Really, really good family. A little small, but he's a Mach 3. Uh, good looking colt. He didn't pay much for him. He only paid 9000 So we had 13. So I'm like, I said we'd buy 4 or 5, and we ended up with 13. I think we're good. So as we're leaving, you guys might remember, every year Amy and I go and we look for a, a muscle massive. First year, big year we had Lawmaker, Muscle Massive. Second, White Tiger, Muscle Massive. I said, we'll go. And we looked. I looked at every horse in the sale. I thought I did. I didn't love any of them. In fact, I don't think I bid on a Muscle Massive all year. And then uh, Rose Run Farms, Archie from Rose Run Farms comes up to me and he says, I bought back a Muscle Massive filly. I bought her back at 15 because I wouldn't take 13. In fact, I don't even know if I want 15, he said. But if you want her, he said, the more I think of it, I'm going to have to break her and train her down. It's going to be cold. Then i got to send her to somebody in Pennsylvania. And he said, I know what you do. Um, I'm not going to go look for buyers for the for the filly. But if you're interested, you can have her. So I said, Archie, you know, I don't got $15,000. I just spent all this money. He said, take her and then sell the shares and pay me as you, pay me as you sell them, which is right up my alley. That's great. So we now have a rose. And her video was great. Her pedigree is great. I'll give you a little. I want to look at her again, too. Her name is Rose Run Versatile. Turn to your books if you still have them. Number 769 is Rose Run Versatile. She is a Muscle Massive filly. She is out of a Malabar man mare. She's a brother that made 80000 took a mark of 59 as a two-year-old. A full brother, a full sister that took a mark of 59 as a two-year-old, qualified in 55 as a three-year-old, won six races, seven races this year. The second dam, Deliver Delavan. $271,000 uh, $271, made. There's money all up and down this family, all from top to bottom. But as an individual, she was just a good-looking filly. So it was easy. Archie was giving us a chance to get a muscle massive that I really liked. I'll be honest with you. I did not go and see this filly. So I guess of the horses we bought and were on our list, this one was given to us, so to speak, to sell. She was not on my list. I did not go and look at her, and I can't really tell you why. I went back and looked at her video. Her video looked great. Her breeding looks good. Maybe I missed her. I don't know. But either way, she's down in Shed Row 12 now. So Rose Run Versatile is with us. So then I'm about to leave. A wonderful Amish gentleman comes up. Malin Miller was his name. He introduced himself. Very nice man. He said, I was talking to Archie. <laughs> Archie from Rose Run Farms. He said, I had a good sale year. I don't want to sound like an Amish man, so I apologize. He said, I had a good sale year. He said, it never dawned on me this colt wouldn't sell for 20000 He said, I just figured he would. I would have taken eighteen probably, but I wasn't taking seven. He said, I brought him home. I brought him back. I could I could train him down, but I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I could train him down, but uh, what am I going to do with an Ontario bred in Indiana? He said, but I will if I have to. He said, I want 10000 for him. I said, Archie. Number 692, his name's Watch Avenue out of the family. Same family as Boston, Red Rocks, Alistair, Hanover. There's lots of money and speed in this family. There's no, no, fault, no faults with this colt. He's a good-looking colt. He looked great. I pulled him out of the stall. He looked even better. Um, but I said, Malin, I just can't make any promises. I said, uh, I'll work with you. I said, if you want. Um, but I can't expect our clients to buy a horse, one that you bought back for seven. And two... Um, that isn't on my list because I didn't talk to anybody about this horse. So he's going to have to sell himself. We have a drone coming in a couple of weeks. We'll jog him, get him gated up, get him under the drone. And if people like him, they'll buy him. And if they won't, they won't. Then we're going to have to have another discussion. And he said, you know what? That sounds great. He said, I'm positive people will love this colt. He said, I'm telling you. He said, I really just thought he'd bring 20 for sure. And he hands me the slip. I guess we must have a name for ourselves in horse racing because I wouldn't know this guy if I backed over him with my car right now. I have his phone number, Malin Miller. That's all I know about him. And I have his horse right here. 
So we have 15 horses that we took out of Harrisburg. 11 that the stable.ca vetted, checked, purchased, and brought home. Two that our clients wanted, and we bought them for them also. And then two other ones that were sent to us. A beautiful muscle mass filly and a... Um, and a really nice, uh, a really nice colt by He's Watching. So you can take a look at them this week under the drone. We clearly have a lot of horses you guys can look at. Sold a lot of horses though. Um, we're going to talk about what we're going to try and do this fall and why it was important to have that many horses. Um, and I want to make sure that we have shares available for what we're doing also. So we'll get to that in a minute. We have a lot of horses qualifying over the next two, three weeks. We probably have 15 or 20 horses qualifying back. Some look really, really good. I don't want to, if I start mentioning one, then I got to go in and write down a list and go through them all. You'll get them as we go through the burns, how the burns are doing, what they're doing. Horses that I'm really interested to see qualify. Obviously, Fan of the Flames is going to qualify back on Thursday. So is Happy Holidays. Be My Delight is really close. It's a filly that I caught, train, I caught training the other day. She looked really good. Better call. Mike's getting close. Look, I did it. There's a lot. It's 15 or 20. We'll go through them all. Um, we're going to go through the 72 to 76 yearlings. We already went through 15 of them right here. Then we're going to talk about some of the horses. Turned out really important. The open house is coming. The open house will be here December 9th. Our annual Christmas, Christmas E open house will be here on the 9th. If you want to come all the way here to the training center and check out the festivities, it will be catered as it always is. There will be drinks here. We'll keep them hot this year. It's cold out this time of year.